Driving basics number eight is passing parked cars. So got one up ahead. Very simply just gonna go around it. And the bit that I wanna focus on today is the clearance that we give parked cars when we go around them. So learners are taught that they should give at least a meter, a door's width of space. So if a door was to fly open, no harm would come. If someone was to walk around the vehicle, there would be no harm to that person. The video today comes after a mock test that I've done this morning down in Ipswich with one of my pupils. And my student failed their mock test and I'll show you what they did on the mock test. So you can see them here approaching uh, and there's a line of parked cars in a lay-by off to the side. And I'll pause it here to let you see there is a school safety zone. It says 20's plenty. Now that is not mandatory, it's not the law that you have to do 20 through a school zone unless there is a red circle around the 20. Um, but it is the advice and there's a lot of parked cars. So I'd be tending to heed towards that advice if that was me. Might not necessarily do 20, but I'd certainly be judging that the fact it says slow in the road, I'd be looking to reduce my speed a little bit. Now, if you look along this line of parked cars, they're barely off the road. Some of them are even touching the white line of the lay-by. And as my learner progresses, I'm gonna pause it at this point here. And you can see that there is no clearance almost whatsoever between the first car. Now on a driving test, and, and when I run mock tests, DBSA examiners work off expected outcomes. So seeing that line of parked cars, the DBSA examiner and I would expect my pupil to check the centre and the right mirror, position a little bit away from the parked cars, creating a safety zone, and carry on. And that doesn't happen. So that straight away goes against that expected outcome. And then it starts to go down as what's, what type of fault is this going to be? Now, none of the first few cars are what I would call a live vehicle. So there's no one around it and there's no one sat in the vehicles. So at that point, that would be a driving fault. Now, forward a few seconds and I'll pause it here. And this is what turns it to a serious fault. So this is what failed the mock test. There is a gentleman here sat in the vehicle. The wheels are turned and, there's, and we are now much too close to this vehicle. So if this person pulls off without doing proper checks, which license holders and learners, of course, both guilty of, if he opens his door without checking properly, which many people do, and we all do it if we're not thinking about it, because we're human beings. We have created no safety zone, and we are gonna have a catastrophic event. We could take the person's door off. If he started to step out, we could seriously injure someone. If someone walks around a car, we're gonna clean them out. Um, really bad consequences, and it's by a school. Um, so this absolutely would be a serious fault. So do, you know, be interesting to know again from my, my full license holders that watch, do you always find yourself giving a door's width of space? Now, if you don't, do you take other ways of mitigating that risk? So if I go past a vehicle with less than the door's width of space and I, see, I deem that it is safe to continue, I make sure that my speed is greatly reduced and that is to mitigate that risk. Wherever there's risk, I must take action to reduce the risk. So I'm going to head into a housing estate where I know there's lots of parked cars. And I'm just going to drive through that route and hopefully if you learn and this will be beneficial to you to sort of see how I would do it. Um, and if you are a full license holder, you know, be honest, tell me, would you do the same? Would you take the same mitigations that I take? So there's a parked car here on a bend. 
I'm not going to be go, going over priorities here and things like that. What I am going over is really just the clearance. So nice doors with to that one, no problem. Now there's two cars here, so that makes it a little bit more risks. And I'm coming up to roundabout, so just a slow through the middle. Do, 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 do. So the risk increases with the more parked cars that you have. So if you have a long line of parked cars, your view is worse. The chances of something happening, of course, are going up. Passing single cars, you've got less of a risk. Generally, your view is better. And I heard that car before I saw it. <clears throat> As per driving basics, can't remember the number now, but the one about opening our windows when we can't see. Mm -hmm. now looking down, there's a nice big line of parked cars and I am going to lose my view. So when I go out, I am going to make sure I'm giving a door's width of space. There's so a cyclist coming through. Actually, I feel it's safer here to let them through. It is technically her priority and it keeps me saying there's another vehicle, so I'm going to offer them the chance to come through. <laughs> and many people I know would have just continued there. The love you gave me nothing else could say. Space, clearance. Now that's a live vehicle. I can see the guy's got out, but I don't know that he doesn't have a mate around the back. So I'm going right to the end. I'm going to make sure not only I give the doors with the space, but I'm slow. And then make, and there you go. He has got a mate around the back. So just on that little road there, long line of parked cars, doors with, and then we found a live vehicle and we could see the delivery drivers out. And as I said at the time, I don't know, he hasn't got a mate working around the back. And it turns out he does have a mate working around the back. And I've reduced any risk of anything happening by not only giving the clearance, but by going through really, really slow. Now, I appreciate I was coming up to a junction but that isn't far off the speed I would have passed that if I wasn't coming up to a junction. I wouldn't have done that much faster. So um, let me know in the comments, do you take the same considerations? Do you find yourself not always giving what we call adequate clearance to parked vehicles that you pass? Do you change how you drive past live vehicles compared to to vehicles with no one inside them. Um, be good to hear from you. Always love reading all your comments. Uh, I will be doing more videos, of course, over the weekend. Um, so stay tuned. Please do subscribe if you haven't. I'd really appreciate it. Just helps the channel to grow slightly. And um, I'll see you for the next one.